why are three other Power Five conferences still moving ahead, do you think? I can't answer it per se. Um, I do know a lot of people, both uh, commissioners, athletic directors, uh, coaches, et cetera, at a lot of these places, and I, they are doing everything they can. And many of us were as well. Like you are testing student-athletes. We all believe the best place for these our student-athletes is with us. Everyone has said that repeatedly, and I agree with that 100%. The hard part now is to say, can we, without a, without a shadow of a doubt, create an environment to where we can travel, participate in games, practice, engage in society, engage on our campuses, and tell our, our student-athletes and their parents that we are doing something that's right for them. Because the other, the other part of this, too, is there are a lot of people involved. It's not just the student-athletes. You've got coaches, you've got trainers, you've got doctors, you've got equipment personnel, you've got all kinds of people that it takes to run a, 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 a football team. And those people are at risk as well. And so it's not just the 18 to 22 year olds that, for the most part, there are some exceptions, for the most part, can handle the virus, et cetera. But there are a lot of people that are closer to you and I at age that don't handle the virus as well. And God forbid um, a young person ends up being thrown on a ventilator, as has happened a few times, two different places. God forbid a trainer, a coach, um, someone else associated with a, with, a, with a sports team contracts the virus and dies. Like, that's a hard thing to say that it's worth it, that we can't put it off, that we can't give these young people their eligibility back. Look at playing either in the winter or in the spring or even look into fall of 21 and say, let's do this when we have more answers. Let's do this when we believe it's a little bit safer. Let's do this where, where most people, not just the student athletes, but everybody associated, can operate with a little bit more certainty that it's safe. So do you think, David Shaw, when it all comes out um, in the fall football wash, whenever that might be, that the ACC, SEC, and Big 12 will eventually come to the same conclusion that your conference and the Big 10 have already come to? I believe one of two things is going to happen. One is there is a chance, that whether it's the NCAA Board of Directors, um, it's Dr. Hainline, who is the, the chief medical officer for the NCAA, yep. has said multiple times in the last couple of weeks and once on your show yep. that the, the path is extremely narrow. It's extremely narrow for fall sports this year with a virus that continues to rage, continues to rage um, college campuses repeatedly are opening and closing <clears throat> within a week, um, sending people away, quarantining people. Um, the path is extremely narrow. Um, so either someone, board of director-wise, someone at the conference level looks and just says, we keep, we've been operating at a high level and doing this really well, but we can't see competition happening. Or they continue, and we still miss multiple games. We still have young men and their families at some point in the season saying, hey, you know what, this isn't worth it. We're, we're, we're opting out. And you will have a disrupted season. Maybe some teams won't. But a good portion of teams are going to have, much like it's happened multiple times this past, the past two weeks, you might be gearing up for a game and a university or a college team shuts down and you lose your game. Um, so that was a lot of fears with our guys, too. What kind of a season would we have if we did have a season? The schedule to play 10, would we play six? Would we play five? Would I lose my eligibility? Would it be worth it? Those are, those are questions that are really hard to answer on the front end of, of this season. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.